It's the most aggressive attack on Israel in decades, and nobody saw it coming. How could Hamas have pulled it off? Welcome to 5 Minutes, covering everything you need to know about the Hamas attack in Israel. I'm John Geiger with Dr. Charlie Dyer, the host of The Land and the Book. You hear him on weekends. Charlie, let's dig in. What made Hamas pull the trigger now? Well, Hamas said it was in response to Jewish presence on the Temple Mount during the Jewish Holy Days, but really, that's just an excuse. This took far more planning. It took weeks and months of planning. So I really see two reasons for the attack now. The first is the nine-month partisan divide in Israel. The country's been torn apart. They had thousands who refused to participate in the military reserve duty uh, and in military security services and pilots. The Hamas saw that and said, this might be a perfect opportunity. And then second, the peace negotiations with Saudi Arabia, uh, the Palestinians felt they were being sidelined as the rest of the Arab world connected with Israel. And Hamas used this as a way to force the Palestinians back onto the world stage. Well, everybody is asking, how could this have happened, though? What about Israel's high-tech sensors and spies and weapons? What about the vaunted Mossad? Why did none of these identify the attack ahead of time? I think the West and Israel and the U.S., all of us were caught uh, putting too much faith in high tech. Uh, You can listen in on mobile phones, for example, but that only works if terror groups use their phones to make preparations. And in this case, it looks like Iran, Hamas uh, went to -to face-to-face meetings in a very low-tech way that just flew under the radar. I'm sure hindsight's going to show that uh, there were scattered and unspecific reports of Palestinian terrorists planning something big. But uh, we can only see that after the fact and realize what it was. What are the military options open for Israel by way of response? What exactly could they do that would be effective in crippling the machinery of Hamas? Uh, Three basic responses. Uh, Two are immediate, one's more long term. The first is an extended air campaign like they've been doing. Uh, They can degrade Hamas, but they did this two years ago and Hamas came back. It also has a possibility of causing collateral damage. The second option is the ground incursion. Last time they did that was in 2014, and that took the lives of over 2,000 in Gaza and over 70 Israelis. This time, Israel's goal is going to be to wipe out Hamas. I'm not sure if they'll be able to do that, but they've got to try and get rid of this problem once and for all. Uh, The third option is more long term. We saw all those photos of Hamas fighters who captured Israelis and took their picture with them as they brought them back into Gaza. Israel is already collecting those pictures, those individuals. They're going to build a profile, and they will go after those fighters. The last time this happened in the 72 Olympics, it took Israel 20 years, but they tracked down and killed all those responsible. You're going to see that happening again. It'll take a long time, but Israel will keep at it. Everything you need to know about the Hamas attack on Israel. A five-minute focus here. I'm John Geiger with our host, Dr. Charlie Dyer. More on this, by the way, on this weekend's edition of The Land and the Book. Charlie, what are the Hamas leaders thinking? That Israel won't respond very strongly? I mean, can't they see that their aggression will cost hundreds, if not thousands, of lives from their own people? Don't they see how this conflict will likely destroy a huge chunk of their infrastructure? You know, the bottom line, they don't care. Uh, they're responsible for most of the misery experienced by the average person in Gaza since they took over in 2006. In the past, every war ended with money then pouring into Gaza to help rebuild, and a good part of that money was siphoned off by Hamas to take care of their fighters and to resupply their equipment. I would like to see this time, maybe it's going to be different, but I'm something of a skeptic. I think Iran will pump money in and weapons, and sadly, unless Hamas is eliminated, uh, they will continue in power and continue to grow. What aspect of this conflict do you think escapes many Americans, Charlie? At its core, this is a religious conflict. Hamas represents Islamic fundamentalism, and they say no land conquered for Allah can ever be given away or bargained away. They can't accept a Jewish state in the land of Israel. Their their charter uh, says that their goal is to create an Islamic state in Palestine that will stretch from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. It takes two to make peace. And Hamas will never be a partner for peace. All right. How can listeners right now to Moody Radio pray more effectively for this conflict? You can pray for wisdom on the part of Israel's leadership. Help them make wise and right decisions. Pray for the safety of those in the Israeli Defense Force who are putting their lives on the line to protect civilians. Pray for the civilians who are caught in this conflict on both sides, Jewish and Arab. Ask God to watch over them and keep them from harm and pray for the Jewish and Arab believers who are there. Uh, The ultimate hope in the Middle East is the Prince of Peace. Pray for them uh, as they seek to share that hope with those who so desperately need it. That's Middle East expert Dr. Charlie Dyer, host of The Land and the Book. And this week's edition features expanded coverage on this attack by Hamas. You can check it out this weekend on The Land and the Book. 